I'm actually transferring my quill today. I'm adding my celadon in with my jumbo paternix. As you can see, it's very, very busy. I do keep my quill with my chicks. The blonde one over there is my celadon, and that's my jumbo. So the jumbos are actually a little bit larger, hence the name jumbo, than my celadon. My celadon do lay blue eggs, and their eggs are smaller. These jumbos have not started laying yet. They were born in January, and they were shipped to me as teenagers, quote unquote. And who I got them from, I'm in Texas, she's in South Carolina. She hatched them for me. These are all females. <laughs> um, these are black larva, uh, black fly soldiers larva, and I do put them in their feed. So I just wanted to show you my quail cage setup because when I first started quail, which actually I haven't even been a year into quail, but I found a lot of interesting things about quail that helped me that will hopefully help you. For one, I do have them in with my chickens, and but they're separated. They're not like... Uh, walking with my chickens or anything like that. Look, this jumbo is not very happy with the celadon. So these jumbos, I don't like picking the quill up actually <laughs> like my chickens because they are so such a handful. Um, and their little talons to me hurt way more than a chicken does so i'm in in and out of my quills cage but i don't pet them as much as my chickens i don't pick them up i don't feed them leafy greens like i do with my chickens the next thing is is that this quill cage actually was a old rabbit hutch we brought it home the bottom of the legs were rotting so we just cut them off and then put them on cinder blocks and then we attached it to the chicken coop. I love everything attached. I wasn't gonna take the chance that this coop would fall down because of the wind or something. But as you can tell, it is inside my coop. My chickens are here. Right now I have about 20 chickens. I'm fixing to add 20 more. Um, but I don't release my quail into the chicken cage. And this is Frances. She shares the cage with the quail because she has a hurt foot. And she's being really loud today. <laughs> that was Brutus. Something must have startled him. He stopped mid-crow. But if she doesn't get better, she's been hobbling on this foot probably for about four months now. And it's actually getting worse. We've tried checking it out. She doesn't have scaly mites. Um, we think somehow she's lost feeling in her leg. She's not egg bound, anything like that. I'd hate to lose her because she is one of my few Polish, but if she doesn't clear up here in about two months, I'm probably just going to go ahead and call her. She's only probably about nine months old, but she is sharing the quill pin. And when she goes, I will open this up and they will have this entire pin to roam. Um, I have probably, I will have 20 quail in this entire cage. Right now I have about 11. And the jumbos and the celadons do get along. But again, I don't have males. I just only have females right now. So the things I found out when I had my own quill cage is I always turn back to basics. <laughs> And something's wrong with Bruno. Here, chick, 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 chick. I always turn back to basics. Uh, the only time I ever have a, a fancy quail cage is if I'm feeling fancy. 
and I might add a plant or I might upgrade their shelter, but I find that I'm always returning back to basics. For one, it gives the quail a lot more room to move around. I always have four things in their quail cage and we'll talk about that. So, the four things. I always have a dust bath. I always have a feeding pan. I always have their waterer. And then I always have some sort of shelter. So the first thing is my dust bath. And my dust bath, remember when I when you make a dust bath, you have to think airy, light, you know, dry. Because they're literally dusting in this. And this is going between their feathers. And um, you don't want it wet. So the things I like to have in my dust bath is... For one, I don't go use garden soil unless it's completely dry because it likes to keep the moisture. I do like to have peat moss, and that is this dark stuff in here. The peat moss is great. I usually find that at Tractor Supply, Lowe's, any gardening center. And then I'll also have DE. So if you look closely, it's kind of, there are some white specks. That is DE, which is diatomaceous earth. I buy my DE. Uh, online on Amazon in the dust bath I will have sand but if unless I'm ordering sand and I have it dumped and I have it dumped in my yard I will um, let the sand dry because the bags are always so moist and remember you want this dusty and airy and so light to the touch the next thing I'll use the next thing I'll use, uh, so we did DE, we did peat moss, um, sand of any kind, really, just clean sand. Um, uh, oh, wood ash. So I do like to use wood ash. The wood ash that I use is straight from my fireplace. I do, now we're the type of people, we live in the country, we're not in the city, we burn a lot of, of woods. We're clearing land all the time and we have winter fires. So some things when people start beginning um, their quail pen is they want to add all these things but they're not familiar. So one thing that you need to be aware of when doing a quail pen for their dust bath and you include wood ash is that you're you don't have embers in the ash now I know that probably sounds like common sense but when people don't burn a lot they're not familiar so just remember whenever you're taking the wood ash out wherever if it's a burn pile or a fireplace you need to look into <laughs> that's Roberto you need to uh, check inside the ashes because those embers will just stay hot for days um, if you're not comfortable putting your hand and swishing it around in, in the wood ash then you're you shouldn't be giving it to your birds you'll burn them singe their feathers kill them so if you're not comfortable placing your bare hand in there then you shouldn't be adding the wood ash yet i would take the ash put it in a metal bucket and then kind of spread the ashes out so the embers will just fall out and this is our turkey gill gill gobbler he is brand new to the flock he's very docile he's lost all his feathers and we got him because he was one of the four males he was being picked on that's why his feathers are gone and we bought him and brought him here so and right now actually I'm hatching some turkey eggs uh, the next thing is oh <laughs> I think he was trying to get me um, we've only had him probably for about a month and he's been very much avoiding us the next thing about the quail cage that I like to talk about now your food pail I say pail or pan because I don't whatsoever like to use the food trays because when you start when you start keeping quail I'm doing this so the chickens will be kind of quiet uh, when you start keeping quail you'll you'll realize a lot of people said they're dirty they waste food well, one of the ways that I found that they keep their food is I put it in a pan. I love the feed pan method. You can tell I love, so I can always monitor how much they're eating. And then I have 
a pan out there right by that uh, American Breezy chicken. It's a meat bird. So here I'm just doing this so they'll be quiet. Now I use a pan that's no shallower than two inches and maybe no higher than four because they will just uh, slosh that food around and then they have trouble jumping into something so high. Now my quail are flighty. They love to have those short bursts of energies and fly around. But uh, they haven't cracked their heads yet. They haven't broken their necks. They haven't done anything. See, this jumbo quail is not liking this celadon quail. So I will probably be taking that celadon out for right now um, and putting her back in with uh, her, her crew. So... But back to the food, um, I use the highest protein possible. I usually go to Tractor Supply, I buy the biggest bag I can, and I think the protein is 30%. And uh, it's for, it'll say game birds, uh, or if you can't find that, maybe for meat birds. But I like to use the crumble because quail are smaller than chickens, and um, you know, I know, I feel comfortable that they can eat this. Now, I do also put some of my chicken pellets in here um the chicken pellets they do eat as well they've eaten actually more of the pellets than they have the crumble i'll put one or two scoops of the chicken feed uh, the chicken feed does contain the cracked corn the quail do eat that for me um i also put sunflowers that have the you know seeds on them still the casing uh, i also put the black soldier fly larva in there i also buy that uh kicking chicken solution and it's like a big jug that you can find at tractor supply or amazon that has um omega fatty acids in it, it has... <laughs> every time he crows he gets chased by roberto but uh it has b12 it has a lot of vitamins and it definitely helps your feathers the one downfall about that is that they make their feathers so good that kicking chicken that you don't even know you have a sick chicken because the feathers just look so fabulous i've had a, a couple of sick chickens and you can't even tell so anyway and i like to have this food pan in the quill uh, because they hop back and forth between the dust bath and this food pan. And I know and I feel more comfortable a lot of it's not falling on the ground. So you get hardly any food there. Um, and they go back and forth between the food pan and the dust bath. And I just place it anywhere. I find that quail like to cram themselves. So and just like get stuck so I always just try to like cram it against the wall so there won't be like a quail stuck between the pan and the fencing because actually they are pretty dumb and they'll get stuck any most for me almost anywhere the next thing I like to have is a water container this water container is cheap you've seen it um, it's only a one gallon plastic container I just come in here and just kind of do like that and make sure the water is fresh um, the reason why I use plastic is because two things. I like it because I do put chemicals in my water. By chemicals, I mean bleach. I do bleach my water. The next thing is I also add, like if they're sick or something, I might add some additives to it. The bleach keeps these containers slime-free. It keeps the algae down. And it... Um, when you have all that growth, it all the water starts to become smelly too. It also the bleach also kills any bacteria. It kills uh, parasite, parasite eggs, and I can easily take this out and put it outside and wash it with my water hose. Now I did first. And I'm so glad I didn't. I did opt. I was thinking about adding a water container that is attached to the cage. But I'm so glad I didn't because for me, I love being able to take this out very quickly, filling it up, doing whatever I need to do, and put it back. I'll refill this probably again every every week probably. I'm going to go ahead and get this quail, this celadon quail, and go ahead and just 
keep her. See, she's so, uh, she's smaller and she's much more squirmy than a chicken. The next thing is the, um, the shelter. So, the shelter. I know you recognize the shelter. Um, at first, I think I would use a, a tree, uh, you know, bark or a pot, but I found a great solution. Um, I love this thing because, for one, I'm reusing it. It is a pet carrier. Specifically, it's a cat carrier. I split it in two and I have two quail cages. This is the top and I put it in here. I love it because it's plastic and you can wash it. The second thing is that it has holes, lots of ventilation. Um, that when it gets hot, they can still get airflow in here and I can still see what's going on. And it's a very low, they love getting in here um, this is where I find most of my eggs is inside the shelter. Um, so the bottom half is in the other quail pen and the top half is in here. So if you have any extra pet carriers you're not using, they work perfect for this. Uh, they're very easy to clean and, and they just stay and they love that ducking shelter. The other thing I usually have in my quail cage, now it's turning into summer, it's getting hotter. Look, these quail are so nervous. They're like trying to get away. Let's see how squirmy they are. They're just so squirmy. Uh, <laughs> it's so hard to keep, but they are surely jumbo. These are jumbo Katarnix quail. Um, but the shelter, that's where mostly I find most of my eggs. Yes, the quail will lay eggs anywhere. Um, the other thing in my pen you can tell is it doesn't have the deep bedding it doesn't have sand we're getting into the summer months and the next key thing is providing plenty of ventilation for your quill so my favorite thing to do again the key is prevention um, I like to prevent bumblefoot so I will put grass down I will put grass down or hay and uh, I won't put it everywhere because again, I want that airflow. So you can tell on the quail cage that this is the alfalfa grass that rabbits like to eat. I just, that's probably my most fancy thing in here. And the rest is left open and their poop will actually fall through the ground. And you know, I'm sure the chickens eat it, but a lot of other things that you'll find when you're researching how to build your quill pen that works for you, a lot of people will suggest all of these different ways to put down on the bedding. But I find that the more ventilation and the less you have, there's more airflow and the less it'll be smelly. Um, that is one thing I don't have is the smell. If I smell the quill, I know that I need to do something with their pen. So here you can tell it's kind of getting dirty. It's getting more like muck and stuck on poop and maybe see this dirt bath. Uh, I will uh, just scoop it out a little bit with my hand, throw it on the ground, and then get some more. Um, the other thing is that I like to use uh, the metal uh, fencing that is like one quarter to half inch. Um, one thing is my quill pen is definitely protected from the chicken pen. So it's actually inside another fenced area so I don't really have to worry about predators that much. But if you have this outside, my biggest fear, my biggest fear was that a raccoon, you know, raccoons are so smart. They would just come up, they would just like put their little fingers through here and just could possibly get a quail foot and you know try to pull that quail down can you imagine coming out to your quail pen and finding these quail like disemboweled because they've just been like pulled from the raccoon trying to pull them? that was like my biggest nightmare <laughs> so I'm actually doubly safe with my chicken enclosure and this being in the coop and it does have like a metal top to it uh, this is actually for my chickens they're waiting on these um let's see the black fly larva I'm waiting on the greens let's see how crazy 
they'll go. Um, I find that my quail do not really eat so much leafy greens for me. They do love the, the soldier flies. Um, but uh, anyway, so I feel that is my best take on a quail pen. Hopefully that does help you figure out what you need to do when you first start for your quail. So I fed my chickens, so they'll be more quiet. Um, let's go inside and I will show you what I use for their dust bath, uh, a big tub to mix everything in. I can show you the inside of the coop. So this is actually my chicken coop. Uh, we built it, painted it, kind of built it to how I like it. I use nothing but trash cans for their feed. Um, you know, I try to not do anything cardboard to prevent like pests and stuff chewing on it. But this is my tub for my dust bath. Uh, I like to mix my dust bath all in one go and then that way I would just fill this up and I would carry it out to the quill and then just dump it. So now I'm back at the quill cage and you can tell like I said they're always either in the feed pan or the dust bath and I am just going to add see they do love to to dust I'm just gonna add this and I just pour it in I actually add more than that but I'm running kind of low and you can see that peat moss and that DE I am kind of lazy right now I don't have any wood ash right now or sand <coughs> But just remember to keep that DE on hand. I love that DE. So back in the chicken coop, like I said, that's my tub for EDE. All the chickens are coming in because they know I give them treats in here. Like I said, I'll just give them some, some worms. But um, the DE, I love to have DE on hand. Uh, it's kind of like always having bread in your pantry or milk in your refrigerator. Um, the DE I get comes in these big bags and it, get, it gets shipped to me and it's food grade. I don't particularly know if there's a difference of DE, food grade and non-food grade, but it's so light and airy and I always just use it and I sprinkle it everywhere. I think it's probably the best preventative thing. You know, I'll just like throw it on the roost because, you know, you don't want to get scaly mites. I throw it down there by their poop. You know, I throw it in their nest on the floor. Um, everywhere you can see like a dust bath. Uh, this is some of the chicken feed. I like to pre-mix my feed. It's getting low. Like I said, I have uh, pellets that I do give to the quail with the crushed corn, the sunflowers, the bird seed that comes uh, in the scratch. I do give that to the quail and yes, they do eat it. The next thing I do order off of Amazon, I love this too, is just... I order all three. She has three different kinds, probiotics, kelp, and yeast, I think. And I just kind of go in between all of them. And it comes into this, like, dusty uh, form. It's a very tiny little scoop. And you just kind of sprinkle it. It has instructions on there on how much per pound. Uh, do I follow the instructions? Not really. I don't overload them with this, but... I do uh, sprinkle it onto their food. For me, everything is about prevention uh, because I'd rather try to spend more money on preventing something than it actually occurring. Uh, the game bird food for the 12, this happens to be Purina. Game bird, 30% tractor supply. Um, and it comes in the crumbles and I just scoop it out into their feed pan. I'll scoop out to my heart's desire and then I'll come over here and I'll get a scoop of this and put it in. And then I'll get extra treats uh, and put their worms in there. The next thing I'll also do for quail is I love this uh, chick grit for uh, the chick grit for them because it is so small. They have tiny beaks, tiny stomachs. Um, I don't put the larger poultry grit because I actually want them to eat it even if I have to sneak it in their diet to prevent um, digestive issues. The oyster shell, I do also put some oyster shell in there with the quail food too. Um, so yes, I do feed my quail some chicken food and chicken things uh, and they actually are eating the chicken stuff more than the crumble. So 
Uh, hopefully you find this video informative. This is pretty much the end of my video. Um, and that kind of gives you an idea on um, what it's like raising quail.